Hi everyone, this is my review of a 2014 Mustang V6. I've had it for about a year now and I thought I'd finally do a review on it because I was so excited to get it. Because of the fact that it is uh, having about 305 horsepower. It sounds really good. Honestly, when you start it up, these things, I've had two Mustangs and this car just seems to keep its, uh, its new car smell. Just, it just does. This one has 336,000 miles on it. Um, the sync system is nice, but it's 2018 and I feel it's a bit dated on this model because every time you go to, you turn the car on, in newer cars, I mean, it's just kind of obvious that your phone should sync to it, right? It does sync to the stereo system, however, it's only for calls. So when you get a call that comes in, it automatically brings it up over the radio, over Bluetooth. Um, it doesn't sync for audio automatically. You actually have to say Bluetooth audio. You have to press this button here. It's a little voice command button and say Bluetooth audio and then it'll recognize it and it'll uh, let you It'll let you stream Bluetooth audio over the radio, so. Sync, please say a command. Bluetooth audio. Bluetooth audio. <clears throat> so now it's streaming at Bluetooth, whether it's music or whatever. Let me see if I can do this with a camera on. Okay, Google. Play music. Okay, Google. Okay, let's see if it plays music. Oh, it does. Nice. Um. So, I'm about to take this thing for a drive. Let's see. There's a backup feature. Rear park assist is on. It'll beep if you get too close to something in the back, but this model doesn't have a backup camera, and I don't really need it. You know why? Because I don't need a screen in addition to my cell phone. See, okay. There you go. See, it's beeping a little bit because I'm too close to that truck behind me. And that's about all it does if it's in reverse. This is a, mi a six-speed manual, and... Uh, I don't know if it's just because it's a V6, which this model is a V6, um, but whenever I take people around in the car, they seemed a little bit unimpressed. 305 horsepower, I mean, with a car that powerful, I would expect a lot more bang for my buck. When I got this thing, you could pick one up for about 16 grand. Um, The gas mileage leaves something to be desired, to be honest. Um, if you step on it, you get a little bit of speed. Uh, but honestly, like any other car, I guess, with an engine this powerful, um, you're gonna be wasting a lot of gas. Um, if I just barely tap the gas and I'm going around town, I get probably, I would estimate I get about 21 miles to the gallon, this thing. On road trips, yeah, the advertised 32 miles to the gallon isn't right. I get about 25 or 26. The gas is going somewhere, okay? But it isn't, it isn't going to the powertrain because this thing feels underpowered. Sounds good. I mean, honestly, 
about half the point of having a Mustang is that it sounds good. And this thing inside, it sounds good. It's exciting. You start it up and it just, it has that. It, well, it has the Mustang sound that I've gotten used to hearing. Um, Um, really, from the outside, I don't think it sounds very good. But on the inside, when you're driving people around, when you're in the car and driving it, when you start it up, it just sounds... There's feedback. There's feedback for when you hit the, the throttle. And I, I really like that. Um, yeah. I mean, is there... Is it, is it as powerful as what you would expect from a Mustang? I don't think so. Not with 305 horsepower. When I heard that number and saw that when they first came out with these things, I was excited. Um, it definitely has more power than the old V6s, the ones that came before 2010. Um, or 2011, I think, is when they came out with the 2012s. Or when, with the <laughs> 305 horsepower. But, uh with this engine but honestly um it's just it seems a little underwhelming and i've lived so some people might be thinking about buying a mustang and saying well could i use it as my daily driver because there are some really silly rich people that only that use they'll buy a what a shelby or something that's really nice and uh really expensive and they'll use it as uh, once in a while they'll keep it in the garage and they'll use it once in a while I use this as my daily driver right now I live in Texas I've lived in Washington and I've lived in Colorado since I've had this thing can you use this as your daily driver if there's snow and things like that the answer is yes you can I've used it in the winter in Colorado when there was a lot of snow on the ground now there's a caveat to that. If you plan to use it in a rural area out in the middle of nowhere or on dirt roads where they don't plow the roads, I wouldn't suggest that at all. Um, I would say that you probably don't want to do that. Um, it's rear wheel drive. Okay, going up a hill, you're going to get stuck if there's ice at all on the ground or snow on the ground. Um, the interior of this thing is beautiful. I mean, I like it. It smells good. And this is even the base model V6. They did a really good job at making soft touch plastic and leather all around. It just looks like a good car. Um, it's very affordable at this point. I think you can get a V6 with 20,000 miles on it for about 15 to 16 thousand dollars um did I really want the the GT the V8 model a lot of my friends say hey you should have gotten the GT or the, the hot rod version that's what my friend Lee says and I'm like well with as hard as I drive this thing which I don't drive it very hard very often but if I'm already seeing the gas gauge go when I step on it occasionally, you can actually watch it go like that. I'm just kidding. It isn't that bad, but you'll be surprised how quickly this thing, the gas gauge goes down. Um, it'll go down. Like I can go through a tank in a day and a half. Then I'm like, where did it go? I didn't even drive, but a, a short trip, maybe 80 miles or something. And that's on a full tank. It seems like it goes that quick. But if I'm doing a trip with a GT or even around town, I couldn't handle 12 miles to the gallon or something like that. You know what I mean? I couldn't handle that amount of gas mileage. Um, that's why I don't have a GT because I'm using this as a daily driver. 
If I wanted, if I had the money, I would just get a Corvette and be done with it. And then I would have another daily driver, like a, a Lexus or Mercedes or something like that. The thing that people don't get when they ask if you have a GT or why didn't you get the GT is because a GT of this year would be would have been about $10,000 more after taxes and after it's all said and done. Really, really, I mean, why, why didn't, you know, why don't you ask the person that has a V6, why did they just didn't get a... Uh, an Audi uh, A8 or a, a BMW, uh, a new BMW, or a, a anything. I mean, this is an entry level, quick off the line car. It gets relatively good gas mileage if you don't step on it, like I just mentioned. Uh, Um, what else do I have to say about this thing? All in all, I mean, just the feel of the car, the sound of the inside, the amount of detail they put into this car, of making it look and feel good, and, and you feel special when you're riding in it. It's not just a normal car. It's not like a Ford Focus or a Cheapo. It feels like a real car when you're in it. And that's, for me... That's what I wanted. I wanted something. Also, this is a red Mustang. And it looks good. Like the design of it on the outside looks fantastic. Uh, applaud, I applaud the uh, design concept of Ford on making these cars. Because people, it does turn heads still. Even being four years old, it turns heads. Um, it looks good, and uh, one thing, I mean, I'd like a little bit more get up and go. It just doesn't feel very fast on the inside. Um, I don't know. But numbers don't lie. Um, if I were you... And you know, you already know the stigma of having a V6 Mustang. For me, I mean a 2014, which is the latest of this particular body style and model year, I would get this one. And that's why I got it, because I wanted this body style. I didn't want the 2018. I didn't want the 2015. To me, they're just looking too much like an import nowadays. This looks like a muscle car. It looks, it has that mean look on the front end. Um, and it, to me, you just feel a connection with the car on the inside when you're in it. If you, Especially if you have a manual, you just get used to driving it, shifting it, and you feel more connected to the car as a driver. From what I understand, um, V6s are a little bit quicker off the line. Nowadays, they're just making them like that. They're, they're better gas mileage. They're quicker off the line. Um, they shift up faster. Um, I had a Ford Focus before this. It was five speeds. This is a six-speed manual. And for me, it, it's just a good... It's a good car. I just... It has everything that I want. No, I don't want to get 12 miles to the gallon with the... 5.0. No, I don't want, you know, a Ford Focus that doesn't, it doesn't do this, definitely doesn't do this, you know, whoa, that put me back in my seat. See, this thing does actually, when you, I just probably wasted a gallon of gas right there though, <laughs> so Uh, another complaint I have about this thing is it's bumpy. Uh, and I, I just started noticing it probably, I would say, about two or three months into my owning this vehicle, is it started being a little bumpy. 
and things started rattling on it like the dashboard started pieces started rattling up here started rattling uh little tiny plastic pieces start rattling after a while and it's because the suspension on this thing is tight and uh <clears throat> honestly that kind of bothers me a little bit i'll eventually ask for that to be repaired uh or glue maybe you can some loctite or some glue or something i don't know how they do that but um I would highly recommend this car. I think it's a value for the price. I mean, when you consider you can get a new Ford Focus base model for what? What are they? 16 to 20,000 now? When you can pick one of these up with 20,000 miles a 2014, which is really nice. I like the body style above all this year. Um, with a lot of power. And it's a sports car. It makes you feel like you're in a sports car because of the sound and the acoustics and decent speeds, I'd say. Um, way more than the, the Ford Focus. Then way more than you're ever going to get out of that. Um, or any economy car. Um, I would say this is a good value. It's a car you can really be proud of, despite the stigma of, why don't you get a GT? Well, you're driving around uh, in a Ford Focus. You know, why didn't you get a GT Mustang? because you didn't want to spend $30,000 on the car. You wanted a good car that was fairly quick, that still had everything you wanted in a Mustang, including fairly decent gas mileage, if you don't gun it. And appeal, like, just... I've never looked at a Ford Focus that wasn't an ST and been like, wow, that's a nice car. No, of course not. It's a... It's a car. It's just a car. It's a car to get you from point A to point B. This is a car that'll get you there in style. And do this. Don't oh, put me back on my seat again. All right. Anybody that's thinking about buying one of these cars, remember what I said. Uh, some obvious things. Uh, rear wheel drive only. So... You're gonna get stuck in the snow if you're in a snowy place and in a rural area. If they plow the roads, it's fine. Uh, you likely won't get stuck if you're careful. If you're going up a hill and there's any snow or ice at all on it, you're gonna get stuck. And that's the main thing that I've come across with this car is getting stuck on hills um, in the winter. Um, gas mileage is good. If you don't drive it like a Mustang, you have to drive it like a regular car. Um, you have to barely tap the gas and yeah, it'll get you where you want to go, but it isn't going to be fun. I drive it like a Mustang. Sorry. This is a Mustang. Um, the interior is nice. Like the materials they use are really nice. The chrome accents and everything are genuinely nice. You feel special driving in this car or riding in it. Um, and it's it's a head turner still, even at a V6. A red Mustang or even black one, a green one, whatever you want. People look at it and they say, wow, that's a nice car. It's nicer than a Ford Focus. It's a special car. Everybody knows what a Mustang is. Um, it's better gas mileage than the, the GT. I think I might have mentioned that. But anyway, anybody that's trying to get into one of these things should. Oh, and obviously a Mustang has very limited cabin space. Uh, there's, there's mainly, basically there's two seats. This seat and this seat. But they're comfortable. And it's kind of like... It feels like uh, with this big uh, 
centerpiece here, this pillar, which is basically an armrest, you and your passenger are gonna feel really special and comfortable in here. It's like a cockpit. I mean, you're back on your seat. If you got a shifter, it's fun, you know? And they feel special in it too, believe me. I've driven a lot of people around in this thing. Girls, mainly, uh, they, they tend to like it. Guys will bust your nuts about not having a GT, but girls, they appreciate it, you know? Um, a lot of girls want to buy these cars too, and I understand why. Um, it's special and they're very cheap still, compared to, comparatively speaking. Um, I'd go ahead and look into buying one. Uh, obviously look at the Carfax and everything. Uh, if you're thinking about buying one. I would, honestly, I don't regret buying this car. The only thing that I ever regret, regretted about buying this car is I was in an accident. You know, I live in Midland, Texas, and um, I had I had a, a friend in the passenger seat with me, and I was stopped at a stoplight. Somebody hit me, a semi smacked into the back of the car, and totally just destroyed the bumper. They fixed it and now it looks like new. It's amazing. I What they've done with uh, automotive, auto body technology and ability to make things look new, it's incredible. This place is called ProTech, ProTech Collision Repair in Midland, Texas. They're amazing. They didn't do it exactly right the first time to my specifications, so they took it back and did it again for free. Um, I would say to anybody who wants their car repaired in Midland, Texas or Odessa, Texas, go to ProTech. Uh, they'll hook you up. The wait, it's a long wait, but they'll hook you up. Um, go ahead and, uh, this is a good value for your money as far as, uh, muscle cars go. It has everything you could, that I want in a car, personally. Uh, so I would go ahead and look into it. Yeah, so that's pretty much all I have to say about this car, bye.